the experience feels like a personality. Gentle, intense. That has to do with the mind view. I wish someone had told me what I'm about to tell you beforehand. So this is the full report from my experience with ayahuasca. Very, very powerful, very, very moving experience. And I wanted to share it with all of you. And the first thing I want to talk about is uh, the general bad press that I think ayahuasca has and that I walked into this experience with. I went in very nervous. I was like, oh my God, this is going to be the most intense thing in your life. You hear people say, and like, there's going to be vomiting and stuff. And like, compared to what actually occurred, that is so insanely different than what it actually is. I wanted to start from here. If I were to give a framework to understand this, imagine that there was a kind of best friend that you either haven't seen in a really long time or you just, it's been so long or childhood best friend and you see them again and it's like the old feelings are completely back. And then imagine like that friend is like a caretaker and can like take care of you in this way. The experience feels like a personality and it's very hard to get across that it feels like someone, but it feels like a person. It feels like a being that is there with you and that's guiding the process. Of course, there's the guides that were there that facilitated, but they were, you know, they, they were not anywhere near as dominant as the experience of the guide that was the medicine itself. And it feels like a personality, someone I got to know and someone I've spent some very serious time with that I can feel in my experience right now. If you do the meditation that is related to this uh, recording that I just did, it was an introduction to guiding towards that, even if you haven't, you know, experienced the medicine, because I think we all have this within us. You know, they give everyone more or less the same amount of the medicine, um, and the medicine will adjust and be like, nope, you need it really, really quiet. And the first two nights were very quiet, and it was just about building trust with the medicine. And I took the same amount the third night, which was like all the fireworks. The setting was very beautiful. It's also really, really helpful and powerful because it really is about these sort of details that we think, ah, it doesn't really matter, but it really does. There's a tree you can look at that's beautiful. There's the sky that you can look at that's beautiful, and it really helps. And then there's the music. Uh, the way it's set up, the timing, everything. Highly recommend to encourage people to do it in the most you know traditional setting that is possible, whether that's in the United States or uh, whether you actually travel to Peru or I guess Colombia as well. The next thing I want to address is this idea of purging and people talk about um, you know, oh, there's vomiting and stuff. And I always thought that what they meant was you take the medicine and it's like, it's like, it's so yucky that you throw up. And it's like, that's just not the case. Purging most almost should be just termed like moving energy. Okay, let's pause for one second and clarify. If you ever hear me use the word energy, it is not to mean anything other than I didn't sleep a lot, so I have low energy, or I drink a bunch of coffee, so I have a bunch of energy in my body not anything mystical schmistical or woo woo so let's just not confuse what i mean and let's continue with the program purging most almost should be just termed like moving energy so purging could be anything from like you know sort of like shaking the body to like move the sensations in the body around it could be like suddenly the body like uh decides to shiver on its own or, or yawn many of these are triggering um, the vagus nerve, which is actually calming the system down. So it's actually sort of on a nervous system level processing things along. So this concept of moving energy is very important in this tradition. And they talked about this thing of like move the energy and they talked about like riding the medicine, like don't, you know, don't lay down for the first big chunk of like hour and a half, like sit up because if you're laying down, like the energy can get really stagnant and stuck moving with the music, which is a lot of what you're supposed to do is like move with the music. Um, connect with the music, let that guide the experience. And they just suddenly find themselves like, you know, burping or yawning or crying or throwing up. And so there is, you know, everyone gets a little a pail that you can throw up. And if you need to, I don't, I don't think most people use it, but there's this moment where it's like, this has to exit my body. The first two days were very similar. And so I'm going to bunch those two together. The intensity was very low. I took the same amount of medicine all three nights and and my intention going in was like, please let this be gentle. Please let me build a relationship with the medicine, like help it be easy and kind. 
I really needed gentleness and kindness and medicine answers. The sense that there is a guide there, that there is a kind of entity that you can reach out to who will hear you is so palpable. And you can just say, hey, will you help me with X? And they will. It won't necessarily be the way you think it is. It won't necessarily be like last for hours. It can last for a few seconds, but they will often answer the request. So the request that I had going into this was, please help me trust and feel safe in my body, knowing that, you know, this is where a lot of the emotional and, and, and traumatic experiences are held. I found that over the years I've been relatively alienated from my body. I've sort of, you know, became a meditation teacher. Um, and I, meditation has been the most helpful thing, uh, in my life in terms of working through a lot of this stuff. And it's a very sedentary, uh, occupation, uh, over time, over the course of the two nights, it was also to allow any part of myself, like from an IFS internal family systems therapy perspective, any sub self, any little child that feels scared or any part that feels like anxious or anything like that to trust the body, to feel safe, to feel comforted and to feel okay. And the first two nights were basically just like this incredibly sublime, uh, gentle, spacious holding of my experience that were just, um, this soft container that was in, and of course there were moments that were intense and like intensely beautiful and intensely like emotion would arise, but I just kept coming back to this experience, slowing my breath down you know, feeling the body, like letting go behind me. It felt like letting go behind me and letting this sort of entity hold my experience. So another part of night two was that if any hard emotions come, allow me to feel them, allow me to feel them as though that part that's feeling them is not alone. Cause that was one of the things that I noticed from the first night is that I would, um, be feeling the body and be feeling like very transcendent and peaceful. And then all of a sudden my mind would, I'd be like, uh, I don't know what's going on. And it'd be painful and emotions. And I'd be like, oh, that's the perspective of my mind, meaning like from the, from behind the eyes. And then I'd switch back into just like a raw body awareness, which is, you know, you can define awareness as including the as part of the mind, but it was like a physical felt experience. And it'd be like, oh, what a relief. So much of my experience of suffering and probably other people's experience of suffering has to do with the mind view, which is the sort of like self perspective of like what's happening. And it's trying to figure things out and manage things. And that's really can be incredibly painful. So it was just trusting the body, um, experiencing the body from, uh, the experience that any pain or anything from the experience of the body. And when I did that, it was just like transcendent and like peaceful, even though it'd be like big emotions happening, all this stuff would just be like such an incredible relief. So on the second night, I'm sort of, I'm there, I'm feeling this stuff. And all of a sudden this song comes on, it's really energetic, really intense. And it also had all these weird time changes in it, which are like really unexpected. And things are like passing through you. Things like hit you and like move through the body in this way. That's like not usual. It's like, the, it's like really energetic. And the person next to me, um, was, is sometimes a guide there. And he was sort of like a very kind person sitting next to me. It felt like this very brotherly sort of, um, kind, compassionate person. We talked a bit, um, before outside of the journeys and he, he sort of gets up on his knees and starts singing this song. And that like really affected me and something about that just released something inside of me. And I'm like, Burr. I was like, I have to throw up. So this is the first time I threw up in the first like two nights and I go and I like throw up like a tiny bit, just like there's barely anything there to throw up, but I dry heave and I throw up a little bit. And I'm just like, clearly something's like moving through again, this sort of music like hits in this big wave and there's this big emotional release. And I just start like weeping. Um, there's a lot of weeping in this journey and I'm weeping into the pillow. I'm crying. And there's this whole arc of realization of like, I felt really, really alone as a kid. There were times when I just felt so alone. Um, and it felt like this thing of being like, you know, kid in my, in the crib and being like alone and like crying and crying and like no one coming, like, you know, crying. And then there's a sudden moment where I was like, was I crying or was I silent? And like, sort of like mem remembering both there is this, you know, all of a sudden there's like, you know, all this like deep pain was happening. And I remembered the thing of like feeling it, but not feeling alone. So suddenly it like felt like I was enveloped and like was being held while this like really intense pain was happening. And that would come and go. There were times when I felt really like alone. And then it went through this cycle of different things of like, you know, the loss of my relationship was just really important to me is the most important relationship in my life lost, you know, during COVID, um, mourning that, and then going back to like 
this, this feeling of like, it was really unfair that I had that experience as a child. Of course, it's probably very common, but it just felt, and I experienced it as being unfair. And then my mind kind of swept through all the people that from all the defensiveness and like that pain that I've harmed in my life. And it was profound to see how that had showed up in all these little like interactions or it's like agitated or like had a hard time. And like, um, those experiences going through all of those. And there was a sense of like, I felt so alone and like realizing that that, like that child felt alone. It's, it's not really me. It's that part that felt so alone. And suddenly it like something switched and clicked. And it was very interesting because I was like, I was like crying in this very like intense way. And it just switched into being like laughing. And this realization hit me all at once that I was like, you know, crying and laughing are really, really similar. And I was like, the only difference between the two seems to be in one, I feel alone. And suddenly I realized I'm not alone. And I could feel the presence of the medicine supporting me. I could feel the sort of myself with this child that was like, had been lost, like all this stuff, like all these different, the people all together, the music, the sort of support. And I was like, oh my God, I feel not alone. And if you followed any of these, my psychedelic reports, the feeling of being existentially alone is at the core of, of what feels like my wounding. I don't know anything else that's a lower level than that than just like I am alone and the pain that comes from that. And I realized in that, maybe in that moment, but in that day that there's like, there's like alone, I'm, I'm alone. And then the mind tries to go, why am I alone? And it goes, oh, because you're sort of worthless. You must be, that's why you're alone because you're not a good person. So then there's the shame on top of that. And there's the protective layers on top of the shame, which is just like, judgment it's saying yeah you're bad right this other part that says you're bad and if i judge you enough you'll go away you'll disappear shame and then on top of that is this sort of like arrogance that's like like you're bad and you're bad and it's like an externally facing like judgment and then you know it's like all these layers right and you go all the way down and you find this aloneness and there's this switch that happened which is like existentially i'm connected i'm okay i'm safe very very powerful um that was basically what occurred in night two. I go into night three with this incredibly soft, gentle, not feeling alone, feeling safe, held by the medicine. And I'm like, more of that, please. I want more of that. And that was my intention. I'm just, I want more. I want that to be more secure. And I'm nervous that if I really go into like intense emotion or really intense weeping, that I'll get spun off into like feeling really alone again. Cause that's happened in other psychedelic journeys where it didn't feel so guided by the medicine. Um, and there's this thing that happened on night two that was clear, but then it really happened here where suddenly I had this like really pleasant, like I was like sitting there trying to like kind of get into it and an hour or so into the journey, uh, maybe two hours, um, there is a sense of like this incredible soft sensation that just like, just lay down, just take a nap. It's like so tranquilizing. And I was like, oh, it feels so good. And I was like, but they recommended to not lay down for the first, you know, section of the, the practice to let the energy move. But it's like, but the impulse is so intense to lay down. And I was sort of like laying down, like, like laying there. And I realized suddenly it's like, this is depression. This is the same sensation as depression. And that's something I don't really talk about that much, but I've had depression off and on for like a long time in my life. I didn't realize that's what it was. I thought I was just stuck. I was sort of like paralyzed and like, oh, I can't really do anything. I'm just sort of here on the couch or here, you know, stuck in a position. But looking back, I realized like it was depression and it's happened all throughout my life. And meditation has been the biggest probable thing that has helped with that. And then maybe IFS and, you know, um, recovery has been really instrumental and in sort of setting the groundwork. So I was like, this is what depression feels like. And I was like, it is an energy in my body. It is a physical like weight that like tells my body to like lay down. And so I was like, okay, I got to do something. And I couldn't, I was like, I don't want to move. And they recommended listen to the music. So I listened to the music and I just start kind of like moving my hands, like with the music as I'm laying there. And like, suddenly I'm like, okay, I have, I have the energy and like, I get up and I'm on my knees and I'm just like really like moving my body, shaking, like trying to like shake off this heavy, dense energy. And I, it's sort of like a fight and I'm like, get off of me. Like, I don't want this anymore. And there's a real like struggle there. And it's, this is an ongoing process. So it goes on for quite some time. And then I'm, you know, really moving to the sound of the music. Cause it's really like helping like move the energy around, you know, and then I'd feel free when, the, when that heaviness would go away. And there's was one person there who had this just like very angelic singing voice. Everyone said the same thing. Your voice is angelic. It was very, very beautiful. And I guess I didn't expect that, that 
not only was the experience going to be like you know intense and maybe there'd be some singing but the people who are leading would be these like really really good musicians and like doing these like complex three-part harmonies and you know all these very interesting instruments it's very beautiful and and so I'm, I'm moving in this way and I'm moving along and this person has this angelic voice is sort of walking around sort of doctoring people like someone needs something and she like she'll sing to them in this way that's you know moves something along it's very clear she's standing at the front of my mat and she's singing to me the song she's actually singing they sung it for many traditions not just shapibo they sung they sung you know songs from judaism and songs from christianity and songs from just all over and at that moment she was singing a song about like the love of christ oh, i forget what it was but it's a very beautiful song and she's singing really directly to me and it like it like cuts through me and there's this I feel this like incredible love from this person and there's also this sort of like weird like moment of being like like whether it's real or not like this figure this person Jesus like he believed in all of his heart that he was dying for me and I was like Ugh! like I just like fell on my knees and like started weeping and just like you know it was so so beautiful and the experience was like you know just moving this thing out of me that was like it needed to to, to weep but what was really interesting was that the intense feeling actually was like, no, no, like, do not give me love. Like, do not love me. It hurts too, way too much. And there's a sense of like, if I receive love, there's all this danger and stuff stuck with it. It's like scary and painful. And like, you know, this almost like bad things will happen if I receive the love. And so it's just like receiving that. And then it's like really weeping, like sort of, you know, I was weeping to the pillow to like, keep it quiet. Cause it's, you try to be somewhat respectful because everything you're doing is affecting everyone around you. She kneels down and is like singing over me in this way. And it like opens something else up. And I'm just like viscerally screaming into the pillow. And she like, she touches me and she's like, would you like to go to the other room? And I was like, yeah, like knowing that, you know, in the other room, you can just be as loud as you want. You don't have to worry about the people around you, etc. There's a few spaces like that. You can go outside, you can go whatever. Any of these other side rooms, they call them the VIP lounge, so people don't feel bad for going to the other room. You would occasionally hear someone outside, like, screaming at the top of their lungs or whatever, because they just there's something they had to get out or whatever. And it's always so relieving, because it seems like that would be crazy and seem weird, but it's like this very human, warm sense is, like, all around you. And the leader said there's a big gift for them to hear me weeping, which I was one of many people who wept, but... Um, especially a lot of the people who are male presenting or male identifying were like, that was really helpful. And so I go to this other room and this is sort of where the, I feel like some of the biggest stuff happens. So I go to this other room, I'm weeping into the pillow. And at some point I'm like, this isn't there's something wrong. Like it's stopping the sort of energy, this thing from coming out. And so I start, I liked, and also I couldn't breathe that that's an extra factor. And so like, I take the pillow away and start like weeping, not with the pillow, but it's like, Oh my God, it's so loud. Like, this is just like, I can't hear it. And whenever I have like a, a bout of like weeping or really processing emotion that way, I usually do it into a pillow because it just, I have neighbors and I feel self-conscious and I, I don't want to be heard, which is an important theme that comes up. I don't want to be heard. Uh, if I'm heard, it'll be bad. And um, I'm, I'm crying. And so it's like, the sound is so loud. I'm like, oh, this is so loud. So I plug my ears and I'm still like crying, like at full volume. And suddenly this image flashes of being an infant, being in the crib and crying. And then I was like, it hits me. I was like, I was terrified of my screams. This horrible sound is happening. Like, what is this terrifying sound? That's why I was like so scared. And I realized as an infant, whether this is real or just how my psyche is reconstructing it to make sense of it. As an infant, I realized that's where I learned this. That's where I learned to shut down the emotion was this sort of like heavy energy. And so I would just, you know, this heavy energy would hit and I'm like, no one's coming. So I'm just going to use this. And it would just be like, oh, I can rest. And it was restful. It, pin, it felt like it would pin my body down. And I was like, okay, I can't move. It, it was a moment later, but I realized, oh, that's like a maternal, caring, like energy to make you stop feeling the extreme distress. I was like, holy shit. So it felt like very, you know, relieving in that way. I was like, oh, relieving. And I was like, but I don't want this anymore. I don't, I don't want to need this anymore. And so it calmed me down, but there was still this sort of like thing of like what needs to be expressed, et cetera. And, and I went back to the other room and there was also this awareness that this was that there was a kindness to this thing that I had been sort of trying to fight off. And so I like was more like thankful. I said, thank you so much for this, but I need to move on. I need to let go of 
this experience. During the journey, a couple other things happened. There was a couple moments where I was like moving to the music, etc., and I had this sense that there was the the medicine wasn't guiding me anymore. And I was like, I need a guide. Like, what's happening? I feel lost. I, I feel you know. And there was a sudden, um, like sudden realization, and the whole thing turned around to me, and it was just like you're the guide. And it was this sort of like leadership position that I, while I find myself in a leadership position all the time, I had never felt it at this level. And it was like you're the guide. You don't need a guide. It's you. And it wasn't egotistical and it wasn't like narcissistic or anything like that. It was very, very empowering. And it's like, oh my God. And like, then I started like dancing like really crazy and like really moving to the music in this way that was like really powerful. And it was just like, I've got this, I'm good. And there was, I think it was like a level of like not needing something from the outside like that kid had worked through something and it was like i don't need this from the outside like i have this thing and it felt like oh this is the caretaker that can care for that child there was another moment where i was sort of fighting fighting with that like intense sort of depressive energy and like moving my body and the music got really crazy there's like they they, they really whip up the music at certain points and then bring it down and so it's quiet and then you know move in this way like whatever the room feels like it needs and there was this moment where um, I like needed protection at this level that was like super intense. And this is sort of one of the most like trippy hallucinogenic things. I like became this like fire ice serpent where I was like made of like both of these materials and was like, you know, a, a, a serpent with like arms and legs and a head. It was just like, you know, this was like a human form serpent. And it was just this super powerful, like what I guess I would say, like a masculine energy. And it was just like white hot through my whole body. And it was just like strength and power. And I was just like, ah, like, it just felt like I was totally protected. This is like a demon came in and it was just like, I took, got all the strength from that to show me like that I have that and I can have that sort of like, if I need that. And it was so powerful to have that sense of like, I have that strength and I have that power. Any visions or things that you have in the journey you know, they say like, if you, you know, feel like you're dying, it's, you're not, you're having the fear of dying and you're going through the fear of dying. Always remember that it's like a dream where it's like all these things happening, etc. but really all those things are yours. They belong to you. Again, I went to bed thinking like, oh, something's really wrong here. Like this whole, this weekend was like good, but it was, I don't think it was good. I think it was bad actually. And like, it was very interesting because I could tell, I could see these moments that I had like these incredible, like epiphany, like connections with spirits or God or myself or whatever you want to call it. And it was just these huge senses of connection, these moments of like laughing with such complete freedom. And I was like, but, but it's bad. And I was like, it's so weird that the signal is so clear and it cuts across every experience that it's bad. But yet I have the memories of these things that were very good, but yet the dominant voice is that it's bad but i went to sleep and i woke up in the morning like with this sudden revelation like all this stuff sort of moved and like of course as soon as i had this revelation i had like a big burp which is like the, one of the kind of sort of purges and the revelation was that the voice that was clearly cutting across everything i was like that's what was so amazing in the morning i was like this voice can just cut through any experience it's like it's really really good at being heard and I was like, and it just like clicked. And I was like, oh my God. And I was like, that is the voice of this infant. And all it wanted was to be heard. And it couldn't be heard. It was afraid to be heard. It had this dual thing. I need to be heard, but I can't. It's terrifying if I'm heard or I'm loved or I'm cared for. And when that occurred, it like realigned everything. And it was like, whew, and all the joy and the connection came back. And it was like, that child was heard. I heard it that it needed to be heard and i heard it they were saying that this was bad and i was like I, you know i didn't say this that i hear you but it's like just innate i was like oh i hear you and it clicked and i went back to this place of being like totally like safe and held and like feeling connected again so it made me realize that a lot of my you know the struggle that i experience in the, the depression and the sort of like anxiety etc is this voice that's like i need to be heard and it like doesn't know how and it like is fighting with the depression it can't you know can't move its body it can't like express it can't cry it's like these different things and when that occurs when i'm actually listening to what's happening in my body i'm listening to what's occurring in my experience it completely uh f feels safe and feels heard in this moment it feels like this the same entity is with me the same kind compassionate sort of like trusting being is here and it's like i can feel its guidance and it sounds totally wackadoo i'm not like a big 
you know, uh, sky beam, moon beams and crystals person. And it really is this sense of like, oh, like if I think about judging people, I'm like, oh, like this feeling of like connectedness goes down. And if I like let go of that and I think about like, oh, I like helping people and supporting and the kindness, it goes up and I'm like, ah, oh, it feels really good. And maybe this is just a normal human attachment sort of system realigning in a way that's very positive. But what it feels like is it's like I can tell when I'm moving away from it and when I'm moving towards it physically, I can viscerally feel this and it's very palpable and powerful and um, is very impactful and it feels like something I can rely on. It feels like a safe um, way of being. So finally, do I suggest other people do this? The answer is neutral. I do not suggest you do this. I do not suggest that you don't do this. I think it's irresponsible of people to be like, go ahead, go do this, because you really have to sort of, um, in a sense, be ready for it. But in a sense, it's like to know that, you know, it's, it's time and uh, whatever that means for you. I know that sounds a little vague. You also want to be sure that you have all the safety precautions in place. You know, I think there, it's counterindicated if you have certain heart conditions, uh, it's counterindicated like for different things. So you want to make sure that you have, you know, talk to somebody who is a specialist and uh, can, can tell you, is, is your body okay in this place? Um, it, you know, psychically, mentally, you, you want to have a little bit of fortitude. Uh, my experience was that when I needed gentleness, it became very gentle, which was very helpful. Uh, it was not just like, like at an 11 the whole time. It was like, you know, it'd be very, it would respond actually to what was needed at any given time. I did, however, need to know what I needed and I needed to ask for that. That was part of the thing. If I just went in there like, I don't know, like it would, I don't know what would happen, but I was very clear what I, like at the beginning, I was like, I just need gentleness. And it wasn't like a thought, like I'm scared and maybe that would be good. It was like, I knew in my heart, it's like, I need just gentleness. Like, will you show me that? And was, that's what it did. Uh, if you're interested in, you know, exploring this thing, uh, the tradition that I did this in, it was the Shipibo tradition, which is in Peru. Um, you can look that up. I don't know if it's easy enough to look up if you wanted to go there. Uh, something someone suggested to me, if you're, if person is interested in this kind of thing is to get involved in your local sort of psychedelic community, which there are, they have meetups and different things and just start talking to people and plan on like, if you want to do this, you, it's not next month, it's going to be in six months or whatever, cause you have to make relationships, you have to plan, etc. It's not a thing that happens overnight. You want to find someone who's really good at this. Do not pick someone who's like, yeah, I've done this, you know, a dozen times or something like that. You want someone who's like life is dedicated to this and they have done it so many times. And ideally they've gone to the jungle many, many times. That's like the, the term they use. Like you've, you've done this in the situation many, many times. If you can find someone that has live music rather than recorded music, I think that would probably be pretty impactful. Although, you know, I'm sure it's, it can work with recorded music as well. That's my general report. I would love to hear your questions. So if you're watching the video of this, leave your questions down below and I will answer them. In this very moment, you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and go ahead and have yourself a lovely day.